All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brandon Carter. I'm an application engineer with Ally PLM Solutions. I want to welcome all of you to the Ally PLM NX Lunch Bites series. For those of you not familiar with Lunch Bites, Lunch Bites is a series to briefly explore capabilities within NX that are often overlooked. I see there's a few uh, new ones, I believe, today. Um, the rest of you, welcome back. If you want to know what our upcoming Lunch Bites topics are, um, check our website for that. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end if you are new. We want our Lunch Bites to be valuable to you, so if you let us hear your suggestions on topics, um, that would be great. You can send those to us via email. There's also a place on our website um, to suggest a topic. <clears throat> if you have any questions regarding today's session, please just write them down and send them in an email. There are several of you on the line with us today. Therefore, you'll be in listen-only mode. Today's topic is on the reuse library. So in front of you, you see an agenda. Our goal today is to take a very high-level look of what the reuse library is. Um, some of the items you see listed here, reusable object, 2D section, um, standard parts, or some of the default content that gets loaded when you install NX. So they're designed to be a sample of what you can do, then obviously you're you're free to add your own content. So we're going to go through both what is loaded or what's there delivered as an example and then also how to add your own content. Um, the first few items there are, are kind of underneath the header down to UDF library. Then we're going to talk about uh, the fastener assembly, um, reusable pockets, and then a short introduction of what product template studio is. First of all, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the reuse library, why use the reuse library? We're all trying to design faster, be more productive. Reuse means higher productivity. The easier you can find something that's already done, the faster you're going to be to re reuse that in other designs. Um, if you think about it, if you find something that you're able to reuse, then you're not going to create it from scratch each time. You're going to find something similar, if not exactly, reuse it. If it's close, then you can just resize it and then, like I said, use that in your new design. If you can answer this question, is this a common, you know, is it a section, common section, sketch, or a, a set of faces that can be used over and over, or features that can be used over and over, or a certain body or part, am I going to use this a lot? Is this something I will reuse? Then maybe you should add it to the reuse library. Reuse also means keeping company product standards. So if you think about it, if, if every user uses the same shape of feature, the same cr feature that was created the same way, with this extrude, this hole, and it's in a library of items and each user uses that, then you're using these items the same way. It's going to make it more of a standardized type feature function in NX. So, as we get started here, there's some library management. The reuse library can be set up on a local machine or a network. The network or lo location would allow, kind of as we were talking with standards, allow multiple users to have access to the same data, multiple hands in the cookie jar. The reuse library can be set up in a native, unmanaged, or a managed environment. So if you're using Team Center, there are options uh, to use it in that, that setting. You see here in the screenshot, we're just right-clicking here on the client inside the Reuse Library tab and go on the Library Management. This allows me to point to those directories where I have my library set up. Just a, a mentionable item here, you see underneath Customer Defaults, there's options for both native NX and managed environments. So in the top of the screenshots, you'll see native NX, and in the bottom, you'll see Team Center Integration. Um, this is underneath Customer Defaults, underneath Gateway, on the Reuse Library tab. And as we go through some of these examples today, you'll see where options for general or reusable component or fastener assembly, the different tabs that you see on these screenshots. So as we go through um, what's delivered out of the box, kind of this sample set, the examples, if you will, um, that's what the next few slides are going to be. So I just want to go through these slides quickly and then we'll jump into NX and use some of these uh, items in our designs. So first of all, the reusable object library is really just a set of folder and you'll see later how we can customize and add our own information in here. Um, you'll see a, a folder for different boss shapes, rib shapes, 
and underneath member select then in that window that's where we're going to drag and drop and reuse this information in our current design. Underneath that you see a header called 2D section library so here we're storing sketch or curve information here you see that we have a cross section of this eye we can uh, drag and drop that extrude from it and then it's really just creating a new sketch but we didn't have to create that from scratch so even that can be very handy. The next little bullet down in reuse library is reuse examples. As far as the examples go, there's an example of PTS templates, which stands for Product Template Studio Templates, and then standard parts. So there's a few standard parts that get loaded um, when you install NX. If you notice, the next bullet down is machinery library, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. As far as here, you see that I've grabbed a particular fastener, this bolt, and as we go through today, you're going to see how we can create pockets with that and use pocket functionality to create a whole series or to just do a, a Boolean operation um, from one reusable component out of another or another component in general. So that'll make more sense as we, we go on. Here you see that I do have an entity called Machinery Library. So I have installed the Siemens delivered uh, Machinery Library these files and these database files are available on Siemens FTP site under product downloads. You can go download the standards that you want to load. Here I've just grabbed ANSI, ANSI, ANSI metric, and SAE. Um, our goal today is not to tell you how to install the machinery library or standard parts. Um, we are going to do a lunch bites on, in the future on that, so tune back for that. Also, if you want to get started on that or learn more information, you see down at the very bottom. We do have a knowledge-based article on our website on allyplm.com, how to install standard parts slash machinery library for native NX. So that will give you some information on how to go about that. The final item that is in the reuse library kind of out of the box is this UDF library. And that stands for User Defined Feature, not United Dairy Farmers. So um, there's my bad joke for today. I'll try not to do any more. Um, You'll probably notice this. If you have been using NX for a while, you, you may have some of these already set up. These are maybe a little bit older way of reusing features. You see the term feature. And there's some of these listed in the Reuse Library tab. Over on the right, you see underneath the Tools, pull down menu, User Defined Feature. There's tools for a wizard, which will help you create these User Defined Features. And then Insert and Replace, which allows us to use these User Defined Features. So, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the product. And first of all, I have a, a um, plastic part here. And let's just go look at the reuse library. So I'm just over here with the books over here on the left, the reuse library tab. And I have member select expanded just because that's what I'm going to see in the particular folders, and that's what I'm going to drag and drop from. So at the top, you see the reusable object library. So this is just what was delivered here with NX. If I drill down to this boss folder, you see there's a cylinder that I can drag and drop and reuse. This is going to give me those dynamic handles that you started to see everywhere in NX and I'm just going to for example come up here and snap it to the center point of that edge blend. This particular entity here in the reuse library is driven by a spreadsheet so you see that I can adjust values you know for different uh, expressions there you see D1, D2 I can adjust the height as I type that in the nice thing about this, if I scroll all the way down, you'll see that there is a database file, which is just an Excel spreadsheet. And these are where those parameters are coming from. So the expression D1, you see 0.2 and 0.4 for different diameters. So for 0.2, diameter 2, or D2, I should say, is um, can be either 0.1 or 0. So based on our first selection, you see how it creates these lists. You'll see a little bit later in today's session when we create our own from scratch that having this parameters and this end is very important in your spreadsheet. That's how NX knows how to format your expressions from left to right and what the values are in each row as you go top to bottom. So we'll come back to that idea. The nice thing is right here from this edit database, I could go ahead and add another row another set of expressions or values for expressions I should say in there. So we've done this you say that we we see that we can come up here and go ahead and boolean add that to our model. If I come over here and grab a, another example maybe in the ribs 
pull this out to this face. I can locate it with that uh, dynamic handle again. Right now I have it centered. There's a pattern associated with this particular feature, so I can add how many occurrences I want or how many ribs as it fans out around there. Maybe I want to change the length of those ribs so they intersect. I can pull those from my table. I can also type in values as I go here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and extend those so they meet past. Here, you'll see that I can bool in, you know, I can add, subtract, or have them set to none. Here I'm doing none. The point is I was able to reuse that information. I didn't have to sketch anything from scratch. Now to make it my own, maybe I want to come up and do my own Unite tools. And you see that actually each one of these was separate bodies to start with. So now I'm making all that one body. And then I can go ahead and unite that new body with the target body or the, the in this case the tool body the solid in the back and with new 8.5 functionality I can come out here and say what regions I want to remove as I go ahead and boolean that or add that to my design. So the point of it is, is how I can go into a library item all of us users are using the same types of features and I didn't have to create that from scratch I made it my own. Reuse. So what about creating our own information in there? So if I switch over to another part, and here I have uh, another plastic type part, and if I look at the part navigator, you see I already have this bottom extruded feature, which is the cutout up there on top. Well, maybe I'm going to use that over and over again, and I want to store that in my library. So underneath reuse examples, I've already created a folder called um, Lunch Bites, just for today's presentation. And actually, I already had these guys in there. Let me get rid of those. So underneath Lunch Bites, you see I can right-click, and I can use a command called divine, Define Reusable Object. I can pick face or multiple faces, a group of faces, a body, a feature, that 2D section that we mentioned in the slides, general, or a part. So here, because these are native NX features on this part, I'm going to go ahead and select Feature and show you how that works. So I'm just going to grab the feature. I'm going to give it a descriptive name so that we know how to find it and also along with the descriptive name I can give it a preview I can use the entire graphics area a file or a region in this case region I can window select what I want that particular preview to be so that's just adding it to my my library if I come over here and suppress that extruded feature or delete it pretend it's not there to reuse this I just drag and drop onto the face now on the bottom right you see it shows how this feature was created on the original part. So it shows that, hey, it has a sketch associated with this extrude. It wants a coordinate system. So I'm really using the preview in the right to answer the questions and check these items off one by one. What's the external or horizontal reference for that? You see it's highlighting X on the bottom right. So I'm going to grab X here, and it wants to go through that face. So with that, I can reuse that object. If I come back over here to the part navigator, you see it's just an extruded feature. It's just as if I created that from scratch. But I didn't have to draw the sketch. There was some trimming, different arcs by center, some construction lines to create that particular feature. Let's go ahead and take that a step farther. I'm going to go ahead and round some edges, blend some edges on here. And these vertical little corners. So I've added my blends. Right now there's one at top, kind of at 12 o'clock. Maybe I want to go ahead and create a pattern of these features. So here I'm just using modeling tools. I got those two features um, set the pattern. I'm going to go ahead and pattern here about the center. And specify that. So now I've patterned that. Maybe I want that entire pattern of cutouts, extruded features, to be added to my library. So I'm just going to come back here and add another version of that and say define reusable object. Here we're still using features. This time I'm going to grab all three features. So I've grabbed the extruded cutout, the edge blends, and the pattern, and I'm going to call this fan pattern. That's my descriptive name. You can see that it is storing these in particular PRT files in that library location. So that's how it's being stored. Here I'm going to go ahead and create a preview of that particular feature again. If I come back over to my part navigator and get rid of those features, just pretend they're not there, and use my, my new fan pattern, just drag and drop. Now remember, it's a combination of the features. So it's going to ask me the same questions I answered before as far as the extruded feature by itself. Let's 
go up here and grab this X direction. I guess it helps if I um, hit next. Come up here and grab X. There's my body through. And then it's going to tail that pattern on top because that pattern was off the same reference. So I was able to reuse that. Once again, if I look at the part navigator, you'll see that there's just as if I created these features native in NX just by pulling it in from the reuse library. If I come up here and get rid of this hole, I already had a hole modeled here. If I go back to the reuse library, you'll see kind of what I mentioned, the older kind of reuse functions, the UDF or user defined feature. If I come in here and look, you'll see there's some delivered different holes here. So if I drag and drop this, reuse this particular hole feature, same thing, I'm kind of looking at the dialog to see you know, what my references are going to be. So I'm going to pick that face. Here's my parameters for this particular user-defined feature. Then it's going to say, where do you want to locate it? Well, I want to locate it on the center point as arc so I can drop it there. The difference here with the UDF, if I go back to the part navigator, see how it's it's a specific type feature. It is a UDF feature. So whenever I do edit with rollback, I'm editing this UDF dialog rather than actually editing you know, the native feature. So a little bit of difference in functionality there. So we've used that hole. I could still come back and edit that and change the particular size and thread type in this particular case. All right. As far as the reuse library goes, some of the delivered items we were talking about on the slides, the reusable objects, you know, we looked at some of the delivered items. Then we just created our own using this part. Let's take it a step farther. I'm going to come over here to this pretty complex part. And I have some other bodies already in here. And these other bodies come from other CAD systems. So I'm just going to open these model views in a new window. So here, this, these features were created in another CAD system. Maybe I want to add these to my library. So here you see I have another library item called Other CAD Geometry that I've added. The way I did that, let me just remove it for a second to show you how I added that. If I just right click and go to Library Management, say New Library, and then browse to that location wherever it may be. I have a folder here called Reuse. So there is that Other CAD Geometry. I already have these stored. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these out and show you how to create them. Now keep in mind, what I'm storing here in the library was brought in from another CAD system. So I'm going to use the same tool to find reusable object. This time, instead of using feature, because it's not native NX, I'm going to come down here and just grab kind of generic faces. So I've grabbed those faces. This orientation, this is going to be where my handle is whenever I reuse it. So I can set that up as I reuse it. I'm just going to call this mounting boss. And once again, define a little preview for it. Um, let me come over here and open up a new window of some other geometry imported in here. And maybe I want to steal, let's use this boss feature here in the center. So let's go ahead and define this. Once again, I'm using generic faces because this came from another CAD system. So I'm just going to call this boss just to not be creative, I guess you could say. So I'm going to go ahead and create my preview there. So now I have those items in my library. So if I go back to my original part, I want to reuse this information in my, my new design. So here, I didn't specify my, my location. So you see that you know, I have this handle, handle relative out in space. That'll make more sense when I show you the other example. But I have it on that face. I can move it around, obviously. And then I can have this set to add. So I'm going to Boolean, Boolean a, a Unite, I should say, to that existing model. Okay, so it's touching that face. It's going to Unite. The other example, the, the Mount underscore Boss that we're going to reuse over here. Notice here I took the time to add this handle at the center point. So whenever I reuse that, that's where the handle is going to be on reuse. So I can pivot about that center. I can obviously move it in different directions snap it to the face, locate that, and I'm going to go ahead and unite this to the model as well. So remember, whenever I come back over here, these are reusable objects, but they were not native NX features. So 
whenever I do an edit, it's just a paste, right? There's no parameters about how tall this was because it came from another CAD system. But that's where synchronous modeling comes into play. So I'm going to come up here and just do maybe a linear dimension on the height of this particular boss. I can use face finder to help find design intent, go planar faces. I can add my own faces that I want to come along for the ride. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust that from 38 millimeters down to 21. So I'm taking advantage of synchronous modeling to make those changes. Maybe up here I want to go ahead and add a radial dimension and change the cylindrical of this. So I'm going to go ahead and make offset. So grab both faces, go ahead and pull that into um, somewhere around eight millimeters here. Six will work too. So go ahead and hit OK. Actually, I went in too far. Not paying attention. Let me go ahead and do that again. So if I come up here and do a radial dimension, grab the offset. Go ahead and change that in a nine so you see that we're able to resize that. So even though this came from other CAD systems, we can drop them in the reuse libraries faces, and then if we need to make them our own, or you know they're close, but we need to make them our own in this case, we can use synchronous modeling to achieve that. All right. Um, before we get into the standard parts, I want to talk about making these these reusable components, meaning these standard parts, other parts, having the parameters associated with them so we can pick from a dialog. So you'll see here I'm browsing to some of the standard kind of example standard parts folder. I'll show you where this is at in a minute. And I'm on a hex head folder and I'm right clicking on a particular component in there and you see this item called a KRX file. So I'm editing an existing KRX file. It's going to bring up this dialog. You see it's obviously associated with that part and I have parameters um, down here, you know, the diameter, length, and thread. As far as creating a new one, I just created a block to illustrate it to you. So underneath the standard parts folder, I have a folder called block. I created a block out there. It was a 4x4x4 four by four by four block using the block feature and I'm going to create a new KRX file. So here you see the same dialog. The difference here is because I'm creating it, I want to point to a spreadsheet to pull the parameters, kind of like what we saw earlier with that cylindrical shape. One thing to be very aware of, this length, width, and height, I renamed in the block. So instead of it being P1, P2, P3 as far as expressions, I called it length, width, and height. So then that's how parameters is going to match up. Remember I said it's very important to have parameters and end in the spreadsheet. Then when we reuse it, we drag the component in. It gives us a nice dialog to be able to pick different values for length, width, and height. Because we're pulling in an assembly, it says, hey, do you want to move it, create relationships, so forth. We'll talk about pockets um, here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, so here I just have this block file. And what I've done is underneath that reuse example standard parts, I created a block folder. I put this block in here. I have the Excel document I'm driving values from in here. And then that KRX file that you saw um, on, the, on the slide that was created. So if I come over here to the reuse library, and that was underneath reuse example standard parts, created the block folder. Here you see this. I can say edit the CRX file. It's pointing to that spreadsheet. If I open up that spreadsheet, here you see that I have parameters and in the format it. Like I said, length, width, and height are expressions inside of this block. So if I look at the expressions dialog, you'll see I have height, length, and width. I do not have P1, P2, P3. So they have to match from the spreadsheet to here. Now if I want to reuse this guy, I'm just going to go ahead and open a new model or assembly. It doesn't matter in this case. I'm going to use an assembly idea here. So I have this blank assembly and I'm going to drag that block in and reuse it from my library. So here's the dialog I get from the reusable component dialog. I can pick my values which is driving from the Excel spreadsheet. Right? Here because it's an assembly idea I have multiple add, you know I can do positioning, I just have it set to move so I can move it around with the move command but I can use by constraints just like you're doing whenever you do an add part in an assembly. We'll talk about the create pocket. I, I'm not, I am going to come back to that. I know I keep saying that. But down here you see reference versus clone. Whenever I do a clone, 
it's actually going to make this a unique part name. So it's going to be block, and based on a naming convention, I have 000 set up out of the box. So the next one will be 001, the next one will be 002. So it's not, you know, it's its, its own unique part file. So we've gone ahead and made some changes to that. We've pulled that part out there. If I look at the assembly, you see we have block 000 now. If I bring in another occurrence of that block, I'm just going to keep it 2 by 2 by 2. Once again, it's cloning. So then you'll see that underneath my assembly navigator, I have 001. They are individual components. They're unique. So if I right click, I can use edit reusable component, because this is a reusable component and I can come back and make changes to those values. All right? Same thing here. I can come back and change this part differently because they are unique. So the biggest thing is set that up. You need a KRX file and like I said, make sure in your spreadsheet you have parameters and end formatted correctly with the expression's name. All right, next section, we are going to talk about that reusable pocket. As I said, you'll see there's a couple tools, kind of a couple ideas associated with it. So if I pulled that block that we just saw into an assembly with a couple parts, so let's say that we pull this block 003 and we drop it on, let's say, the parts called plate. When I drop it in there, I can actually turn on something called create pocket, which will allow me to do a Boolean subtract. And then down in that plate part, you'll see that it's creating a link by and a subtract feature. So wherever that block would move, it would keep updating that pocket. That's what we mean by a reusable pocket. It's associative to whatever the tool is as we move it around, and it is a reusable component. So once we get in and start pulling parts in, you'll see this in action. The other thing we want to talk about in this section is fastener assembly. So here we're talking about not only using standard parts, but being able to create and configure or customize a stack. You know, I want this washer on the top stack, I want a plain washer and a nut on the bottom stack, and have different configurations, and it, it'll find sizes based on the hole size. Well, why would we want to use a faster assembly? Kind of the same theme, right? It's reuse. It, it promotes reuse in company standards, right? It's, it standardizes pairs of components and the fasteners that go with them. And it is fully compatible with the NX machinery library, so what I downloaded and installed. The other thing that's cool is constraints are automatically created. So let's take a look at these ideas. Um, it is approaching 1 o'clock. If you've been on Lunch Bites with me, before you know I always talk too much and run over so it'll probably be about another 15 minutes uh, before I wrap up just to give you a heads up as always we'll put our replays up on our website if you do need to leave it shut up cut off at one there so before we look at the fastener assembly idea or even some of the pocket ideas I'm gonna come up here and just I'm just gonna use the, the delivered sample set of standard parts and drill down here and go to this hex bolt, and I'm going to drag this on, obviously, and reuse it. So here, this reusable component, I'm able to pull size and length. You see size is basically the diameter shape here. Go ahead and create different lengths of this. You should see this guy growing if I look the uh, web update. And make some changes there. I have this set to move, just like we did with our block part. It's just like we're applying the part in the assembly, obviously. And I'm going to go ahead and accept this. So this is going to put me on a move command. And I, this is just the move command like you probably use all the time in assembly. And I'm going to go ahead and just drop this up here at this center point. And obviously, as you saw in the options, I could use constraints. So I'm just going to snap it to that point. This is a reusable component. So I can right click, say edit reusable component, come in here and change um, the particular um, dimensions and so forth as we discussed earlier. So the other part of this is, if I go back and say edit reusable component, is this part I keep skipping over and I said I'm going to talk about. I will talk about it now, I promise. I can create a pocket. What that's going to do is with this fastener, let me actually just go ahead and move this guy over to the right here. What that's going to do, if I hide that component, see how it automatically created a whole stack. Now notice it only goes through that one plate. If I come back in here, do my edit reusable component, 
I can edit the pocket and what's going on here is I only have one target body so I can grab both target bodies and it has my options inside there which I can I can adjust but the biggest thing is I want you to see how it's associative so if I move this around you'll see how the hole tracks with it also if I move this down into the plate a little more so obviously there's an interference there notice what it does it turns that into a counter bore hole so the point is that's fully associative if I pull this back out using the move command or using a, a constraint then you see how that's being associative so that's what the create pockets going to do okay let me go ahead and get rid of this when I delete this you'll notice it gives me a message about some inner part links because it is linking it down into those parts so I've, I've removed that part now the other piece of this was that fastener assembly so if I go to assembly I'm sorry tools and underneath reuse library we have went through most of these tools right reuse library management define reusable component I was doing a lot of these with right clicks here's fastener assembly and I can come up here and find the coaxial holes I'm picking the individual holes I can also pick them by face notice with find coaxial hole it does find the bottom hole as well I can come up here and say well I want to apply a, a fastener assembly configuration so I can have different configuration stepped up uh, set up I should say whether they have top stacks like a washer in this case on a top stack a washer on the bottom stack a nut on the bottom stack and you'll go out and look for those sizes and apply those uh, to the assembly the other thing I had turned on was create constraints automatically so notice how it built these assembly constraints and here this minimum screw extended length based on whatever extension I have through that thickness of plate it's going to go out and find the appropriate length of fastener here they're grouped nice and neat in one little collection because they're all part of the assembly stack the other thing to wrap up with that discussion is if I come over here to my um, reuse library once again and I find the uh, block that I was using just for example if I pull this out here and use it in my design let's just set it up to move just kind of move it over here so you can see a little better so inside of that if I go to reusable component you'll see that I have that option to create pocket like we saw with the fastener so if I go to tools reuse library reusable pocket and grab that part I'm basically doing the same thing see here how it says subtract if it's cylindrical in shape like a fastener was doing then it create a whole series that's why it was doing counter board with the through hole whenever I move that up and down in the plate so here I've marked it as subtract and if I turn off that block you see it's doing the boolean operation and once again that's associative so if I move that around then the um, if I move that around then the, the, the boolean subtract the cutout would would track as well the final thing we want to talk about here and like I said it's real our goal is to just have a high level um, I can't remember exactly what month but early early next year I am scheduled to do a full-blown 30 minutes on product template studio so product template studio or you'll see it referred to as PTS is a way of reusing parametric models okay so some of the challenges we've kind of discussed them as we went through and talked about the reuse library is it can be difficult to reuse complex parametric designs especially if one person created it and you're the one trying to use it right you have many designers but sometimes you have a few that are real experts and you're you're making changes right sometimes it's just a diameter change or something and it'd be nice to have a nice user interface to be able to make that change on that parametric model so the goals we're trying to capture design knowledge we're trying to have an easy way to reuse these parametric models or designs and also have a chance to have some design validation built in so what this looks like is you have a window called NX product template studio and this is going to open up in this case I have just a part model and really what this is trying to do is allow you to be a programmer even if you're not a programmer meaning this dialog comes up you can do this drag and drop apply screenshots like you see I have here of the eye 
all my expressions are going to show up for the model so I can have expressions and kind of format a nice clean dialogue rather than going through the feature tree of a, of a model or through the entire expressions dialog box of a model. And then we can just use that design. And with it being part of reuse, then we have a nice dialog with drop downs and, and screenshots to be able to change different values. This can also turn into, um, or, or you can actually make this um, work with assemblies, meaning the combination of templates so that if this part changes and this part changes, you can turn any parametric part into reusable design. Like I said about the validation simulation can be built in. And then combining these templates, you're basically getting this assembly idea. Okay, So you can have a series of templates put together. So there is an example here in the reuse library. And let me just come over here and start a new assembly or, or model template here. And underneath the reuse library, underneath reuse examples, I said we had this PTS templates. So PTS templates, there is one example in here, it's just a, the sprocket gear. So this is what it looks like to reuse a, a PTS or product template studio template that somebody has authored. If I double click that template, you see that I have a nice user interface for to change this model basically parametrically. So if I come in here and start driving some of these dimensions, you'll see that we are making these changes and the model is updating. The other thing, you can have feature edits built right in here. So here you see that there is an edit sketch that you can go straight to giving the end user the ability to interact with particular features other than just the values. And basically we're going to go ahead and drive that and create it. And just like we saw with my generic block of having the naming conventions, here you see I have a 003, the next one I pull in will be a 004. So they can be set up with naming rules to have unique dimensions. Here I'm not going to change anything. And you'll see that I have 003, 004, they are unique parts. Once again, they are reusable components. So I can right click and say edit reusable component and come out here and make changes to those models. So the biggest thing to be aware of for Product Tiplin Studio is you have basically somebody who's going to author these, right? create them, build the expressions, build the dialogues, and then you're also going to have someone you know, the end user then reusing them. So, um, like I said, just to give you an idea of what it is when you see PTS, because it is inside the reuse library tab, but coming um, at the beginning of the year, I will do a full 30-minute uh, lunch bites on this topic. Um, one thing I forgot to show you, let me step back just for a minute, is... I talked about the UDFs, the user defined features, and what you'll see is basically in the reuse library is that section where there are some delivered UDF libraries. But let me show you what that looks like through the toolbar. So here I just have a block with a hole in it. So you see it's just this particular threaded hole. I want to use kind of this older format, or maybe you do have some of these already in your library from, from um, you know, previous versions or previous times. I'm going to come up here and you'll see that you have a whole set of tools here for user-defined feature. The wizard is going to help us create it. Now here I have my folder already um, locked down, kind of read-only for what I was doing, so I don't have permissions to that right now. But what you're going to see is you're going to go through this particular template. I can give it a name. I can't remember exactly if this was a quarter or 20. I can type, you know, my descriptive name. I can say what features are going to be included in this. So it's just a wizard, wizard at you know asking you questions. So I'm going to say what expressions I want to go in there. You know, these are my references. So it was on this face. It was using this edge as a dimension off of. It was using this edge as a dimension off of. So when we reuse that, in this case, I'm just going to get rid of that hole. If I go to tools user-defined feature and do an insert, come in here and find my particular library. So here was the one I'd saved. 
So I'm just going to select that. There's my parameters. What face, what edge, what edge, and you see it's going to create that hole. Just like we talked about earlier, this is a user-defined feature, UDF, so I do edit it as a user-defined feature, whereas the defined reusable component, that is going to be like it's a native feature created at that time. So just to kind of bring that discussion um, back, in, back, in, back around. So to wrap up here, um, you'll see that, as I mentioned at the beginning, all of our replays are on our website, www.allyplm.com. You see the next few lunch bites coming up here at the end of the year, both for NXCAD and CAM, for those of you who do both. You can also suggest a topic down here at the bottom as, as, as well as replays. Um, just to mention here, um, there is a training promotion going on here at Ally PLM for the Essentials for NX Designers class. It's a five-day basic class for December 2nd through 6th. And you can get an iPad mini with retina display. Um, for that promotion, you can go to our website and check out promotions for more information. If you're interested, just the next upcoming training offerings, so the Essentials for NX Designers for CAD, at the top, then NX CAM fundamentals if you happen to be a CAM guy, and also to point out the third bullet down there, NX CAM turning fundamentals, um, a new offering we have, a two-day class if you do turning late work. All of our classes can be taught online. Check out our website for more information. I appreciate your time. Thanks for your attention this afternoon. Um, I hope you found this session informative. Please email us your suggestions for Lunch Bites topics. And also, you, I says, as I mentioned earlier, you can request topics or suggest topics on our website. Also, email us any questions you may have had during this session. Um, I don't always see the questions. I try to go back through and look if you did message. Um, but if you can email those to me, just because of the nature of how we have the meeting set up, I don't always see those. We appreciate your time, and let us know if you have any questions. Have a good day.